Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com with another weekly video. Today we're, we're starting a series on distortion. Now, this is going to be too big a topic to even come close to covering in one video. So this is kind of like some fundamentals today. We'll build on this and get into some more complex stuff. So I'm, I'm not going to talk much right now other than to tell you I've got a little demo set up here. I've got a piece of quarter inch flat bar with a laser pointer attached to it. Now the reason for the laser pointer is I'm going to point this at a target that I have set about 25 feet away. So any little motion is going to be really exaggerated and we're going to be able to watch this thing move around as it heats, expands, contracts, and all that stuff. Any little motion of this and we're going to be able to more accurately see what happens as this heats and then as that weld metal shrinks, as that weld metal solidifies, shrinks, and cools off. So this is the beginning. This fundamental, one of the fundamentals of distortion is that heat, is that metal expands when it's heated, and if it's heated up enough, it will, it will come back to its original shape and then contract more than that, especially when you weld on something and add metal, and that adds material that then solidifies and shrinks. Now I've got this piece locked down pretty good in a little drill press vise here, clamped to the table so it can't move around a whole lot, and again, I've got the laser pointer zeroed in on the middle of the target at the other end of the 25 feet away and I'm just going to run a bead up the side one side only and I'm just going to run a bead right up straight up here going uphill and we'll watch it now that it's heating up on the bottom half of this bar stock and because that metal is expanding on the bottom half it's pushing it's pushing that laser pointer upward it's tilting that that bar stock upward that's the first thing that's happening now as I gradually reach halfway point with the bead now it'll start to solidify, shrink, and all that, and it'll reverse motion for a, for a minute. But not for long. You can see it pulled to one side, the side that the bead is on. That's typical. That's what everybody would, would have guessed it would do. But now it's going to take, a, it's going to take a, about a full minute for this thing to quit moving. So I'll speed things up just a little bit in a minute. But it'll, you can see it, the, the red dots start to creep upward. And it's not going to move much more to the side, but it's going to move upward quite a bit more because those shrinkage stresses of that solidified weld bead are just, uh, are just going to pull it upward. And there you go. See, it's, it's pulling upward much more than sideways. Sideways kind of it, it, it did what it was going to do after just a little bit, but it's continuing to to draw upwards. Now I'm going to run the second bead about an inch or so away. Now there are a lot of people tell you books will tell you in fact preheat will you know help to prevent distortion. Well this is still good and hot. It's probably a good two or three hundred degrees. I'm going to run another bead an inch or two away from that one. Same thing though, starting at the bottom, and you can see the same things happening as it's heating up the bottom part it's expanding that bottom of that bar stock and causing the laser pointer to point upward quite a bit so the first thing that happened it moved up and it moved to the side a bit more because that's the second bead on that same side now it's drifting downward a little bit as I reach the top and we're gonna let that one cool off for, for, for until the dot quits moving anyway and again I'm speeding things up here in just a minute because I found it took a, a full minute for that dot to completely settle down for everything to kind of cool off and, and do what it was going to do so I've sped it up just a little bit here just for the sake of not having such a long YouTube video well that was interesting wasn't it did you see what happened there a lot of people would have predicted that, that uh, sideways movement would have been the greatest movement because when you weld on one side of metal the heat is all uneven it's all there and the other side doesn't get as hot and then the bead shrinks and it pulls it sideways but actually what happened was the, dis the direction of travel of the bead made much more difference than the side that I welded on so that's today's first concept the, the, the cumulative stresses of that weld puddle moving upward drew the piece upward so that red dot was much higher than it was when it started out because it drew the piece upward it's like lacing a boot if you're lacing work boots and you're not if you don't do it carefully you get it too tight at the top and it's uncomfortable because you're gradually each lace, each lace can kind of hold a little bit of stress and then the next one builds on that and next one builds on that and so that's kind of 
that's an analogy for what a, a weld bead is. It's moving along and gradually contracting as it solidifies and cools and so you have accumulation of shrinkage stresses and that's why today's exercise showed that the, the, the direction of travel of the bead made more difference than the side that the weld was placed on. That's something to think about especially when you're welding some, something like square tubing. For instance, a piece of square tubing on a plate. All right, you weld on this side, is it going to pull this way? Well, maybe, but it's probably, if you've got a gap in it at all, it's going to pull more in the direction of the bead than it is in the direction of the side you're welding, or at least as much, anyway. And, you know, and then there's all those times that it'll fool you. <laughs> I've been fooled a few times filming this video, but this is one concept that holds true for the most part. That direction of travel of the weld bead makes a lot of difference in distortion. All right, so we're going to set up a, a piece of square tubing. This is about an uh, inch and a half, inch and a quarter, uh, inch and a quarter on, inch and a half, I think, uh, square tubing. And I've got it set up with the laser point on it, pointer on it at the target. And I'm going to weld the top and the bottom and then the sides, and we'll watch that thing move around. And you'll see that the, that the direction of travel of the bead makes a lot of difference. It doesn't make a difference at first. When I, when I heat up an area at the beginning of a bead, it actually expands and moves it the other way. But as I travel, then it comes back and then some. So that's a basic principle of distortion is that the direction of the bead makes a difference. And then also when metal is heated, it expands. And then if it's heated enough, it expands back to its original state and then, and then keeps going some. So you can see I've got a laser pointer here kind of the same situation as I had on the earlier example. This time it's on square tubing instead of flat bar. So we can see what, what happens and I weld the top and bottom and sides and all that kind of stuff. Alright, I'm going to weld the top first. And I'm going to weld it in this direction. So that's the direction that we're expecting to see the laser pointer move. So let's see what it does initially and then see what it does as I move along with the weld and then see what it does when it completely cools off. Right now, just like before, the heat is expanding the top of the piece and so it's driving the, the member downward that's got the laser pointer on it. So the laser pointer is pointing downward. And that's going to be like that for just a little while. And then as I kind of get about halfway across, things start to change a little bit. So the, the red dot starts to move sideways a little bit as the uh, weld progresses. And now it's coming back up. And I'm going to speed things up here in just a minute. Right now it's kind of real time. You see it's, it's just moving rather slowly. But it takes about a full minute to settle down and completely stop moving. So I sped it up just a little bit just for the sake of making this but a little bit easier to watch. you can see that the dot is still moving and it's roughly the same amount uh, sideways in the direction of the bead as well as the side that the bead was placed on for this first run here. And now we're going to weld the, the bottom and just for kicks I'm going to weld it in the same direction as I welded the top just to see if it pulls it even further to that same side. Probably not the best idea to weld two sides, two opposing sides like this in the same direction. I like to change up directions like that because I do know that it, it does pull. But this is just a this is just a demo, so we might as well do it wrong and see what happens. Again, the bottom is heating up now, so it's pushing the laser pointer upward because the bottom is expanding from heat. And then that'll all change in a little bit, kind of change direction. It's starting to come down now, the, the, uh, the red dot. And as I finish, you can see now it's pulling definitely to one side and pulling downward because that's the side that the bead was placed on. So again, speed things up a little bit here in just a second. It's going kind of like real time right now, but we'll speed it up a little bit because it does slow down. But because it takes about a minute to completely stop moving, I just sped it up about four times or eight times or something like that. So we could watch it move until it stops. All right, so you see it's pulled now to the side much more so than, than uh, any other way because I went the same direction on top and bottom. All right, well now we'll weld the side. We'll go uphill on this side. And so, uh, again, that side is heating up. And so the first thing that's going to happen is going to expand the metal on that side and push the laser pointer in the opposite direction from the side that I'm welding. 
maybe not quite as much now since top and bottom are both kind of locked in but still you can see the, the the red dot moving just a little bit to the to the one side and now it's it's kind of reversing a little bit and coming back and in just a minute it should also be coming up a little bit as this thing settles down moving rather slowly right now but moving and now we'll speed things up just a little bit and you can see it pulling to the side that the bead was placed on it pulls it right over just about to where we started before it was ever welded just right about in the in dead center now I'll weld this side and I'm gonna weld this side downhill I wouldn't hesitate to weld tubing like this it's only about, you know, even the thickest piece of it is only an eighth inch wall thickness and the other one is uh, about 70 thousandths wall thickness. But sometimes you have to weld in a, in a direction to make it come out the way you want to distortion wise. But some codes require all uphill welding, but I'm not welding to a code right here. And, uh, you know, it's just, just for instruction. But it, it, is, uh, it is an option. All right, well, let's see what this does. Now that I've completely welded this bead, feeding wire from the back of the puddle just about finished it alright now tapering off and letting it cool off and let's see what that dot does if I'm right it's gonna pull in the direction that I welded as well as the direction that the bead is on and oftentimes another principle is that last side you weld is gonna pull more so you know you can check it as you go and kind of plan plan one side ahead you might come out a little bit better off now if the other end of this piece was locked in or welded to something else and, and some boxed in in some kind of frame all this would be doing would be putting some stress in, in in place and wouldn't necessarily be moving anywhere but it adds up so move move your heat around change the direction that you travel and you'll be better off because because direction of travel as well as bead placement both make a difference in distortion now this one didn't come out perfect you can see I'm shooting down down and to the right so that's 25 feet away though that's not much distortion but I did find out that for a joint like this this sequence works really well I, I did a bunch more testing and stuff here so basically I weld the top first in one direction and then the bottom in a different direction and then both sides vertical up either it doesn't really matter the sequence after that and that came out really really close and that also works for even doing round tubing like saddle joints at a 90 degree weld part of the top in one direction part of the bottom in the other and then uphill on on the two sides and it came comes out really close because the top and the bottom get locked in and there's very little movement after that so anyway hope you got something out of this today I know I learned something in shooting it which is always the case I appreciate your time and please subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel yet and hit the thumbs up button if you like what you saw we'll see you next week thank you